Good morning, Cypress. Okay, so we've got the end of the chapter that we started yesterday to have a little look at. So, remember, he has just had a message from Drax World, and they have told him that he can enter a competition to go on a new theme park ride, but he'd have to go to China to do this. He could be the winner of the competition. He could go to China and go on the new space ride, Rocket. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. I was still smiling after the play was over and everyone had finished clapping. Lisa said I was the friendliest looking big friendly giant she'd ever seen. Mum said, I loved it, you looked so happy up there. I waited till we were getting in the car and then I showed Dad the text. China, the biggest thrill, thrill ride in the history of the world. Your chance to become the greatest dad ever. I got that crispy new world feeling just reading it. I expected Dad to jump up and down with excitement and say, get the sun cream, Liam. Inexplicably, he didn't. He shook his head and said, no one really wins those things. Well, someone must win them, otherwise they wouldn't be allowed to advertise them. Of course someone wins them. Come on, it's just a phone call. Yes, a long, long phone call. This is just a trick to get you to spend loads of money calling a premium rate phone number. Then when you do, there's nothing on the, at the other end except a voice saying, please hold, and playing some nice classical music. And they collect the money for the call. But you've been specially selected. Yeah, me and 10 million others. He deleted the message. We walked home past the shopping We walked home past the shopping centre. I looked up but you couldn't see any stars. I remember thinking, I'll probably never get out of Bootle as long as I live. It's funny to think I am now at this moment further away from Bootle than any other living human. That night Dad wanted us all to play Monopoly in the kitchen. Monopoly? Has anyone ever played Monopoly to the end? Don't most people just sort of flip into a, slip into a kind of boredom coma after a few goes and wake up six months later with a handful of warm hotels? If it had been Risk or Clued, <coughs> that would have been something. But Monopoly, sit down, he said, it'll be nice, all of us together, we haven't played a game for ages. I said, Monopoly is not a game. Well, here's the dice and here's the board. How is that not a game? It's not a game because nothing is happening. In Monopoly, you can ask someone else to take your go for a while while you go to the toilet and it won't make any difference. Can you imagine asking someone else to take your go in chess or Risk or football? I'll tell you what Monopoly is. Monopoly is my life, going round and round the same streets, over and over again with not enough money. So, said Dad, <clears throat> you don't want to play them? No, I don't. I got up. I was going to go and play a few hours of Warcraft. It's always an anticlimax, said Mum, when you're in a play or something, and then it ends. You don't want to play a little game of Monopoly with your real-life Mum and Dad, said Dad, but you'll play all night with your invisible Warcraft friends. Haven't got any real friends left. Have I? Maybe you would have if you weren't always coaxing them into illegal situations involving high-powered sports cars. Oh, now, said Mum, he isn't always doing that. He only did it once. And isn't once enough? They were still discussing this when I logged into Arazef and summoned my guild, the Wanderlust Warriors. We were crossing the blasted lands with a caravan of traders when the door opened and Dad looked in. Listen, he said. I'm sorry about earlier. If you don't want to play Monopoly, that's fine. I'll play Warcraft. Okay, thanks. But it doesn't really work like that. How does it work then? So I tried to explain Warcraft to Dad, but honestly, where do you begin? He didn't even know what an avatar was. I said, like when we play Monopoly and you're always the top hat, well, it's like that, only more complicated. That's me on the screen. Look, that elf. He squinted at the screen. There were hundreds of avatars across the vast desert of the blasted lands. I showed him which one was mine, and I introduced him to all my other guild members. We're mostly very heavily armed night elves. I think he was impressed. You see, I said, in Monopoly, you get as much money as you can, right? And that's it. In here, you have to get money, and health, and experience, and skills. And then you use them for a quest. What kind of quest? Well, there's all kinds. Some of them are dangerous and complicated, and some are simple. And you meet hazards and monsters. Sometimes serious monsters, so you run away or get help. And sometimes trivial monsters, so you fight them. And if you complete the quest, you gain experience and new skills, and maybe some strength and wealth. So then you can level up. What? See, I'm a level 40 elf, but I want, I want is to be a level 70 elf. Then I can engage with some really serious monsters. When you engage, that's called an instance. So we're having a bit of an instance right now with this dragon. The dragon has ambushed us, but the Wanderlust warriors stood on the ground and fought like a well-oiled machine. Soon the dragon was dead. So were two of my warriors. But that was okay, because I've got healing powers. I brought them back to life and we looted the dragon's horde. That's what's happening in my head, of course. 
To Dad, it just looked like I was sitting there clicking the mouse so fast it sounded like castanets. Cosmic, I yelled. Look what we found. XR of Madges. If you use this just before an instant, it doubles your brain power. This, said Dad, is not a game. This is a career. But it's good on it because people accept you for what you are. Namely, an elf with magical healing powers. Is that what you really are, Liam? No, but in game. If I have experience and strength and stuff, I can go on quests and do things. In life, you can look like a grown-up and shave like a grown-up and be gifted and talented and everything. You've still got to sit in a class full of kids who call you freak and Wolverine and stuff. Dad nodded his head and it all made sense to him. Then he got up my profile so he could have a proper look at my avatar. It says here he's shorter than average. If you're short, you get extra agility. Plus you can sneak up on people. Dad said, a shorter than average magical being with lots of friends. Well, wow, that's a very nice avatar. Good night. I did offer to tell him something about the history of Arazeth, or who Horde were, and about the Alliance, but he said, that's enough for one night. Thanks all the same. You get back to your quest. Don't stay up too late. You've got school. It was only when he'd gone, I'd noticed that he'd left his phone on my desk. And only when I picked it up that I remembered my phone was a clone of his. So the number he deleted from my inbox should still be in there in his. It was. I copied it back to my phone. Okay, so what do we think he's going to do? Remember, he's just got the number back for this competition. Okay, so what do you think he is going to do? I'm on hold. I made the call on the school bus the next day. The bus to school the next day. I remember looking out the window all the people queuing outside the post office, standing at the pedestrian crossing, going in and out of the 24-hour Tesco. None of them looked at me like they'd been specially selected. I was going to win. I dialed. The woman with the friendly voice answered right away. Tracks communications. Do you want the opportunity to be the greatest dad ever? Yeah, I do. I really do. I was thinking about it all night. I talked for about a minute before I realised she was a recording. If you accept the terms and conditions of this competition, please press the star key now. I did. We'll take your call as soon as we can. In the meantime, please hold. Remember, all you have to do is get put through. They started playing classical music. They were still playing when the bus pulled up at the school gates half an hour later. Every now and again the music would stop and the friendly voiced woman would say, Your call means a lot to us. Please hold. There must be a lot of people in the queue. Maybe Dad was right. Maybe I wasn't that special. I was walking in through the school gates when I got a text alert. Yes! We have our first winner. Yes? What's yes about that exactly? Our first winner is Klaus from Hamburg in Germany and his daughter Anne. Anna's two great passions are thrill rides and helping others, says her father. She once spent 12 hours on the Space Mountain roller coaster at Euro Disney in order to raise money for a local hospital. She hopes to get people to sponsor her to ride the rocket and so raise money for children who were injured in wars around the world. When her school friends first heard about this, they wanted to help her. We knew there might be a problem getting through the number, so they all came to school early and all called the number simultaneously. A boy got through and gave the phone to Anna immediately. She is a worthy winner. In other words, she cheated. I was still on hold during the registration. Registration's a noisy, noisy business, so no one noticed the music. But first lesson with maths with Mrs. Jewell, and Mrs. Jewell was always full of long silences. For instance, Miss Jewell, square root of 64, class, long silence. Miss Jewell, anybody? Anybody at all? Class, more long silence. Still, there is no need to shout. Miss, miss, if there's no one else offering the answer to the question, there is no need to try and attract my attention. If you have no competition. Yes, miss. Anyway, miss, uh, it's pie times that... Thank you, Liam. I already know the answer. I already know you know the answer. I'm hoping to find out if anyone else knows the answer. Wayne probably knows miss. He's good at maths. Miss, but he doesn't always have the confidence to put his... Liam, I'm only too happy to hear your thoughts on geometry. I don't want your thoughts on your fellow pupils. Just going back to the volume of the cylinder then, miss, is it? Don't go back to it, Liam. Let someone else have a go. Yes, miss. So, volume of a cylinder. Anyone? Anyone at all? Long pause. Yes, miss. So, the volume of a cylinder. Anyone? Anyone at all? Long pause, but not silence. A tiny little orchestra fiddling away. She frowned. She prowled up and down. You could see that she thought it might be in the next room, or in her head. Finally, she said, Can anyone else hear music? Or are the angels finally coming to carry me away? I laughed at this, probably too loud and definitely too long. No, no one else joined in, but everyone did stare at me, including Miss Jewell, who stared at me and then at my pocket. It's Holst, isn't it? She said. I said, no, miss, it's me, thinking, who's Holst? The music was written, written by Gustav Holst. He's called the planets. 
It's not usual rubbish. Why are you playing it? Well, miss, uh, I saw a thing on the telly about how if you play classical music in the background, your brain really likes it and it makes extra pathways through your synapses. You can get brainier by just listening to classical music. Definitely works, miss. Look, how many questions I've answered this morning. She was sort of humming along to the music now. It took the phone out so you'd hear it better and asked, why is it called the planets, miss? I know this was cynical, but she's a teacher. She loves questions. Miss Jewell talked non-stop for the whole lesson about music, about Greek mythology, about the solar system. At one point, she tried to explain just how far away Neptune was, and everyone gasped. And then she said, and it's a near neighbour compared to the stars. And she did a massive calculation on the board to show how far the nearest star was in both kilometres and light years. It was the best lesson she ever, ever gave us, but I was still on hold at the end of it. I did get another text to that, though. Our second winner is Samson 2 Touré from Waterloo in Sierra Leone. Samson 2 is the cleverest boy in the country. Recently his class was given a geography project about irrigation. Some of the other boys got A grades. Samson 2's project was so good that the government bought it. His father says it's important to push your children hard to fulfil their ambitions. Samson 2 and I have fun setting achievement targets. For instance, on his 10th birthday he set himself the target of becoming president of our country. I set him the target of winning this competition and he did it by writing a computer programme that bypassed the on hold part of the phone call and put him straight through to the operator. Although he's not interested in fairground rides, he's looking forward to this opportunity to study the wonders of the world. I'm sorry, but if you already live in Waterloo in Sierra Leone, instead of the Waterloo near Bootle, then you really don't need to go and see the wonders of the world, because you're already in one of the wonders of the world. You've got jungles and rivers instead of gasometers and bypasses. It's like the Grand Canyon wanting to come and look at the crack in my bedroom ceiling. Still two lucky winners left to go. During the kerfuffle between lessons, the next one was announced. Our third winner is Max Martinet of Lille in France. Max's father believes in discipline. So many children today are allowed to run wild, he said. Not Max. I insisted that he does exactly what he's told. If the children are bad, you must punish them. If you're good, you must reward them. Max does as he's told. I'm told to win this competition. I told him to win this competition, and he did. See, all these other kids are getting help from his parents. What's my dad doing? Valeting a taxi. The next lesson was media studies with Mr Middleton, who was blatantly hates me. He watched a DVD about the history of washing powder adverts. No one noticed my phone playing in the background. I wondered how my credit was holding up. I'd now been on hold for three hours. Did it make me want to give up? No. What made me want to give up was the next text message. There were only going to be four winners, and this was the fourth. We have a new winner. Hans Zandu from Bosnia. Hans father, Edam, says childhood is a happy time, and now we can be happy, even if we don't have the things we want. So I gave Hassan everything he wants. After all, it's only money. And I can always get more money. For instance, he really loves thrill rides and wants to be the first ever to ride the rocket. So I found the number of the girl who won it for charity. I phoned her and offered, her to, offered to give her the charity twice as much money as she could raise with sponsors. Simple. Everyone has their price. If the competition was over, then the music should stop and the line should be closed. But the music was still playing. Then I realised that if I'd bought, he'd bought the German girl's place, then he wasn't the fourth winner. He was the replacement first winner. There was still one chance left, and now the music had stopped and there was a ringing sound. I was being put through. I pulled the phone out of my pocket and got ready to speak. A hand snatched the phone out of my hand. It was Mr Middleton. I pleaded with him not to hang up. I'm in a queue, sir. I have been here since 8 o'clock this morning. No mobiles in class, an invariable rule, and basic good manners. You should know that. Please don't hang up. I could hear a friendly woman's voice talking on the phone. I was through. He snapped the phone shut and smiled. Tell me, he said, what's more important than in the news that Omo used to promote the washing powder in the 1960s. What was important about them? I'll give you a clue. Suds. Longer lasting suds. Now then, anything? No. You weren't listening to me, were you? You were listening to little voices in your head, or on your mobile. Maybe you'd like to tell the rest of the class what they were saying. It was a level 70 monster question, the kind you're supposed to walk away from, but I engaged instead. I said, recent study have shown that the chances of an asteroid hitting Earth in any time in the next 100 years are 5,000 to 1. Blatantly, the odds get stronger with every day that passes. A big enough asteroid could cause total global extinction, and therefore, it doesn't matter how long your soap suds last, and it doesn't matter if you've been specially selected or not. Sometimes, you don't need to, you don't need to take the Exler of Magis first. Sometimes, you simply step up to the monster. The Exler just comes. He sent me out of the class. Fathers have children. Finally, this was the night I finally took down took down my It's Your Solar System glow-in-the-dark mobile. It wasn't even astronomically accurate. It still had Pluto on it. Everybody knows that Pluto is not a planet anymore. It's sometimes too big. For, it's something a bit too big for an asteroid, but too small for a planet. It's nothing. Like someone who's too big to be a kid and too young to be an adult. The phone rang. A friendly voice said, Hi, Drax Communications. Still want to be the best dad in the world? The time I waited, this time I waited for the options to come up, but they didn't. There was a pause and the friendly voice said, Hello, Mr Digby? Oh, what? Wait, yeah, 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 that's me. Who's that? Uh, Dr. Dina Drax here. I've been waiting for your call. 
You've been waiting for my call? Yes. I tried to call this morning. I was on hold for about a year. I thought there must have been a million people in the queue. But I told you you were specially selected. Didn't you believe me? Yeah, but the on hold thing went on so long. I really wanted to share that piece of music with you. Well, thanks. I enjoyed it. And to find out how patient you were. Patience will be an essential quality for this trip. Oh, I can be patient. Really, I can sit for hours. Good. Well, Mr. Digby, you're through. That's good. It's completely cosmic. A car will collect you from your registered address 8 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Dr. Trax, the rocket, what kind of ride is it? Is it a reverse bungee or a roller coaster or... Wait and see. That's one of the ways in which you can exercise your patience. Now tell me a little bit about your child you'll be bringing. I'd completely forgotten that dads have children. I do hope it's a girl. We're very short on girls. Oh, she's a girl then. Definitely anything you say. And what's her name? Who? Your daughter, Mr. Digby? My daughter? Time to engage. I said the time... I said the name of the only daughter I've ever had. I said, it's Florida. Her name is Florida. If Liverpool City Centre was level two, a secret location in China must be level 50 at least. I was going to make up the, I was going to make the same, I wasn't going to make the same mistake as last time. This time, I was going to skill up before levelling up. In the world of Warcraft, you can have weapon skills, gathering skills or trade skills. You can have mining skills too, but they're a bit rubbish and you have to play by a pickaxe. If I was going on a quest disguised as Florida's dad, I would need dad skills. I went through all the books, on my dad's bedside table. They were mostly colour charts of quick drying, low odour bathroom paints. You made with mad names like Arctic Glow, Antarctic Glow, but there was one called Talk to Your Teen, which made, was all about how to trick your teenage son or daughter into talking to you. Unbelievable. It was like finding the cheat sheet for Orbit 4, except it wasn't Orbit 4, it was my life. But look at this. Does your team sometimes seem sulky and uncommunicative? Meals are the most natural place for the conversation to flow. To create the best possible conditions for this, you should turn off the television before eating and try to serve fiddly food. Fiddly food keeps everyone at the table longer, whereas a pizza can be dispensed within a matter of minutes. A kipper can be a hungry teen at the table for half an hour. In other words, meals are traps, except what sane person would bait a, kid, a trap of kippers? It also said, it's very important to show an interest in their world. Ask them about their friends, their music, their books and their computer games. So he was never interested in the story, history of Arazeth, or the Wanderlust Warriors weapons at all. He was just keeping me talking. I should have realised, because when I carefully monitored Dad's conversations for several days, I discovered they can all be broken down into five headings. Namely, how we got there, what the parking was like, what it was like in the old days, something thoughtful, which made you think. Okay, so, this part of the story, okay, I want you to think about what might happen next. Think about a prediction. Okay, so we've read a large chunk of the story today. We now know that Liam has been selected, okay, for the challenge, and that he has said that Florida is going to be his daughter. So, what do you think is going to happen next? Okay, think about where we know we know that Liam is in space. Okay, we know that he's now won this competition to go to China to be the first to play on this rocket. So, what I want you to think about is how do you think? we get there does he manage to convince florida to go with him okay is he going to keep up the act does he then does he convince his dad to take him what do you think is going to happen in the rest of this story